Hey there, everybody. I was doing some electrical work the other day, and it got me thinking that if you have to remove an outlet, here's something that you may want to check. Some outlets are split, and that is that they get power from both sides of the 240 volt supply. If you just put your test light or your voltage probes into the upper half of the outlet or the bottom half of the outlet, there may actually be power in there even after you turn off the breaker. You could get a real nasty surprise that way. If you look at the outlet in the video, you'll notice that the top half of the outlet is showing 120 volts on the meter, and the bottom half is also showing 120 volts on the meter, but when we put the leads in the two hot slots, we end up with 240 volts. This is what's known as a split circuit outlet. You'll find them in kitchens, usually on the countertops. They run on a 15 amp double pole breaker. It's a 240 volt breaker. Now depending of course if the building was wired to code or not, you never know, somebody may have come along and done something later on. Or you may find something where they've used two separate uh, single pole breakers that may not even be located beside each other in the panel. That's wrong, it's not to code, but it doesn't mean somebody wouldn't have done it. So that's why you gotta check the top half and the bottom half before you just assume that the power's off and pull the thing out of the wall. From time to time you may run into another type of split circuit outlet too, where the top half of the outlet or the bottom half of the outlet is controlled by a switch. Now these are usually found in living rooms or maybe even in bedrooms, and they're usually used to control a table lamp from a wall switch. They're not 240 volts, these will be 120 volts. They're usually wired to a single 15 amp breaker in the main service panel. Now if you're doing some renovations and you decided that you want to add one of these split circuit outlets, uh, the one thing that you got to remember is you got to hook your hot wires to the two dark colored brass colored screws and you got to break out the little tab so that you can split the circuit. You don't want to leave that tab in there or you can end up with a dead short. Now you don't have to break out the tab on the neutral side of the outlet, only on the hot side. And the other thing is that even if you strip the wires and push them into the little holes in the back of the outlet, instead of using the screws, you've still got to break out that tab. But when you're doing any wiring, it's always a good idea to start at the far end and work your way back toward the service panel. When you get to the service panel, of course, you're going to have to have a double pole breaker for your split circuit outlet. You could also use two single pole breakers if they're side by side, and then you just install a handle tie so that the two of them act as one breaker. Whatever you do, though, don't use two single pole breakers that are located in separate parts of the service panel that are, one of them is three or four breakers down on the same side, or it's across on the other side with the other breakers. Don't do that. Of course, if you're wearing a switch-controlled split outlet, then you only need one single pole breaker. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope it helped you with your project. Thanks for watching.